All right, now in this uh, short video, we're going to use those two um, turning point forms that we found in the previous lesson in the example, and we're going to actually solve for the x-intercept from there, which is just a little further on, and it, it's actually much easier from this point than it has been from an, any other form. So you might remember that on a graph where a parabola goes through the x-axis here, and here that the vertical height of that point is currently something or other zero. So the y value is always zero. So that leads us to the first step. It's substituting zero out for y and then um, simplifying or solving for x. So this is what we end up with, zero equals y. And then you just undo everything that's been done on the right hand side one step at a time. So you would first of all add this to the left hand side. So you'd have 13 over 4 equals x minus 3 over 2 squared. Then you would undo the square, which is square root. So you would have root 13 over root 4 equals x minus 3 over 2. The brackets can actually go at this point because we don't need them anymore. So we'll get rid of them. All right, uh, now you notice that You've got surge on the left hand side. Some of them you can evaluate, some of them you can't. So the next line down is that we evaluate the ones we can. We have root 13 over 2. Um, and I'm also going to add that across to the left hand side. So it's plus 3 over 2 equals x. All right, now you might remember that um, quadratics can have two possible x-intercepts, and in fact this one does have two possible x-intercepts, but what we've got here on the left-hand side is only showing us one possible x-intercepts. So what's happened? Where have we made a, a slight error? And it comes down to a tiny detail that is always, always the thing that people forget. When you square root something, there are two options. So for instance, the square root of 4, you could have 2 times 2 or minus 2 times minus 2. The only requirement is that the number has to be the same number multiplied by itself. So 2 times 2, same number, minus 2 times minus 2. Now this only works for, or well, this works best for square roots, so it's something you need to remember that at this step here, going into that step there, out the front there should be a plus minus to indicate that there is a positive solution and a negative solution. So out the front of this 13 on root 13 on 2, there should be a plus minus. All right, so I'm going to erase the, oops, this green circle. Okay, so now you can see that my two solutions will be uh, plus root 13 on 2, plus 3 on 2, so it will look like this will be 1 root 13 over 2 plus 3 over 2, or the other one will be minus root 13 over 2 plus 3 on 2. Alright, so you can see that there, there are two solutions which is fitting or fits with what we know of parabolas having two x-intercepts. Alright, sometimes there will be certain instances where the parabola will only touch the x-axis and you'll see that there's something happens to this um, or this step here and that will be quite apparent that the plus minus won't mean anything even though it's still there. All right so what you need to remember is y must equal zero and then you um, add or subtract the, the constant term off the end, square root, remembering to put in your plus minus when you square root and then add or subtract this across here as well until you're left with just x and two solutions. All right, the way people tend to write both solutions is that they will flip the order and put the three on two first because it's the same in both, isn't it? And then they'll say plus or minus the part that can change. So they'll say x equals, and the way mathematicians read that is they go, okay, so there's a, a positive solution with the plus and a negative solution with the minus. And this takes care of both solutions in one line and it's not necessary to write two. Although, when you come to graph it, you are expected to label them. Right? And with this third, 
all you'd have to do is label it as 3 on 2 plus root 13 over 2. There's no need to work it out as a decimal. And this one here would be 3 on 2 minus root 13 on 2. Surds stay as surds. Don't uh, feel the need to calculate them as decimals. So we'll try it once more with the second example. And I'll move through it fairly quickly and then I'll let you have a go with um, some questions that you've already done. So the first step on the right hand side is to set y equal to 0, which is x plus 3 squared plus 6. Move the minus 6 across equals x plus 3 squared. And this example has been chosen specifically because there's something going to happen. I'll just keep going. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of minus 6 equals x plus 3. And at this point, I say to myself, um, what number multiplied by itself would equal minus 6? As you can see from this example where there was root 4, the two numbers were either positive or negative. It's not possible to have a square root where one number is positive and one number is negative because they're not the same number anymore. They're two different numbers. So this root 6, sorry, root minus 6 that I have is the key. When that square root is a negative, I'm not going to be able to find any, any third that is equal to that, a square root of minus 6. So this tells me that this parabola doesn't have any x-intercepts. All right? So if you reach a point like this, where the left-hand side has become a square root of a negative, you can, un you can stop there and you can say to yourself, I know it doesn't have any x-intercepts. And just to prove it, we'll do a quick sketch. So we know the turning point is at 3, or sorry, minus 3, 6, which is up here. And we know that it's a positive parabola, which looks like this. Does it go through the x-axis at all? No, and that's what this calculation here has shown us that the square root of negative 6 is not possible so therefore the parabola doesn't go through the x-axis or doesn't have any x-intercepts. All right so a few things to remember um, to find the x-intercepts y must equal 0 1 y equals 0 2 solve for x um, 3 Remember, and this is what you need to write in your books at some point, the plus minus at the square root. This will give you your two solutions if there are any. All right. And the last thing that's worth remembering is that square root of a negative is not possible and if you don't believe me you can go and chuck it into your calculator and see what it tells you all right so and this means no x-intercepts for the parabola all right so if that doesn't make any sense make sure you ask questions or re-watch the first part of the video to get an idea for the process